Hi, my name is Mike Clark. Today we're going to take a look at what schools should consider when they're looking at a laser machine. First thing we need to take a look at is the classification of the laser system itself. Typically what we find in the industry is most lasers are classified uh, either as a class 2, a class 3R or a class 4. As we go up in the numbers the machine becomes a little bit more potentially dangerous to, to the operator. Class 2 lasers what that means is that the doors are interlocked, so anytime I try to open up a door, there's an interlock which shuts the laser down um, and, more importantly, actually shuts the whole machine down so that the head stops moving back and forth. Also, any stray light coming off a laser where, from a reflection standpoint is captured by the actual glass on the laser system itself. If we're looking at a class 4 laser, which is typically the other type of laser that we see most of the time. What that means is that the doors are permanently open and therefore the operator can reach his hand in while the machine is firing um, and they can also potentially be hit in the eye with a stray beam. Typically the safety features on most lasers can theoretically be altered, however we do not want to do that. The reason for that, especially when we're looking at a school, uh, for two reasons. One is, if I have the lid open, the machine can be moving back and forth in terms of the laser head. That presents two problems to the student. One is, they could theoretically burn themselves by placing their hand across the beam path. Two, they could have a pinch point where the actual head will, will brace their hand up against the side of the, the, uh, of the bed. This isn't catastrophic because there are uh, sensors in the motors that will actually stop the head from pushing too far, but again, this is something that we try to avoid happening. In terms of safety, there isn't an actual e-stop or emergency stop on some of the machines that we sell. If you want to do an emergency stop on the machine, all you really need to do is lift the lid. And that will basically be an emergency stop. You can physically press the pause button or the stop button, but the machine will always finish off its end run before it stops. So if you want an actual emergency stop, once you lift the lid up a little bit, it breaks the interlocks and the whole machine shuts right down. It's always very important that the, mach the actual machine shuts down because some uh, other machines that we've seen in the market, actually the head, the laser beam will stop, but the actual head will keep on moving. When it comes to the operation of a laser, typically we don't want to leave the machine running by itself. This can create a fire hazard and in extreme instances actually cause a fire inside the machine which can damage the machine and potentially create a large cost in terms of fixing the machine. It's a good idea when you purchase a machine to have a, a fire extinguisher near the machine so if there's any if there is happens to be a fire, then you can actually put it out quickly with a fire extinguisher. When it comes to class two lasers, because we're working with an interlock system, we don't need to wear special glasses because the glass um, or the acrylic lid will absorb any stray rate, any stray light that, that the will bounce or reflect off the engraving surface. So there's no issues where somebody can have the beam hit them in the eye or on any exposed skin. One thing to remember when you're working with the laser machine is that the laser machine is going to generate two things. One is dust and more importantly the other is smoke. The smoke needs to be evacuated out of the machine very quickly. Uh, we typically do that either with a dust collector and in that case we're taking the smoke out of the machine and blowing it directly outside. In other instances we may be actually using a filtered system. The filtered system will take the smoke from the machine, pass it through a series of uh, cloth and carbon filters and basically pass the cleaned air back into the room. This eliminates any gas from being placed outside. When it comes to smoke, um, most smoke typically isn't hazardous, but there, there are certain materials that create uh, hazardous uh, materials. Uh, one of the more common ones would be PVC. Uh, PVC generally when it's burned creates chlorine gas. Um, 
chlorine gas basically um, is dangerous if inhaled. The chlorine gas also reacts with the air, which creates hydrochloric acid. Uh, the hydrochloric acid becomes, uh, uh, becomes uh, acidic dust, and that dust can settle down on any of the moving parts, and over time can create pitting and rusting on the physical machine itself. Other products like neoprene create cyanide gas, uh, so again, it's always very important to, to get the MSDS sheets uh, for any of the materials that you're working with. Uh, these are basically material data safety sheets. Uh, you can get them from any of the manufacturers that are supplying the products that you're cutting. And you can find out what the materials are that are embedded or the, machine, or the product is made with. And then you can find out what types of gases that it's basically going to create when it's burned. If we take a look at most of the Trotec materials that we sell in terms of the consumable uh, sheet stock, uh, things like the laminates, the acrylics, the wood, they're all designed to, spe to specifically be laser friendly, which means that they're not harmful to the, to, the, to the laser and the smoke that they're generating is within acceptable tolerances. Uh, our woods, for example, uh, has no harmful chemicals that are used in the actual manufacturing of the wood, so when you're cutting them, you're not releasing any, any VOCs that basically would be harmful to any of the students. One of the important features that most lasers have nowadays is a built-in air assist system. When I talk about air assist, we're not talking about the actual exhaust that's drawing the smoke out. What we're talking about is actually shooting a jet of air down into the cutting surface. The reason we're doing this is because typically a lot of the product that we're, we're etch or we're cutting is creating flames. The air assist is designed to blow that flame out. Typically we only use this for cutting, we don't typically use it for any etching applications other than maybe rubber stamps. The one special feature that we have in the Trotec system is that the air assist pump is actually built into the machine. If we take a look at a Speedy 300 for example, you'll notice if I take off the side panel, we actually have the air assist pump built right into the physical machine itself. There's a couple of reasons why we do this. For the uh, one reason is basically it's very quiet. The other option would be to have an actual external air tank beside the machine. Uh, the problem with that is that it's constantly running, uh, even when you're a uh, raster engraving and you're not using it, it creates a lot of noise. More importantly though, is that the pump when we tell it to turn on for the vector cutting in the software is it turns automatically when we on when we actually want it to turn on. The nice thing about it turns on, brings the air delivery into the physical head itself, air flushes the optics to helps keep them clean, goes down through a cone system, the coaxial force of the air going in a vortex type style speeds up the air and then and then shoots down into the actual cut into the curve which is your cutting area for the laser itself. When it comes to, to general safety the operator Trotec takes this very seriously. We've done a lot with the machine to make sure that the operator is safe and they're protected from the laser beam itself and also from the smoke and chemicals that could be generated during the actual etching or cutting process. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments below.